They made it. SpaceX has truly rocked the entire industry by successfully catching a booster on their very first attempt. Let's dive into this groundbreaking achievement, explore the reactions from industry insiders, and answer the burning question, just how impactful could the success of this flight be? At 8.25 a.m. Eastern Time, 7.25 a.m. Central, within a 30-minute launch window starting at 8 a.m., the colossal Starship roared to life and began its powerful vertical ascent from the launch tower. All 33 of Starship's Raptor engines ignited simultaneously in a breathtaking display, generating more than 16 million pounds of thrust at full power. That's the equivalent of over 35 large jet engines. Unlike Flight 4, where an engine shut down unexpectedly, this time, none of the engines failed. Clearly, the contamination filters installed to prevent ice from entering the fuel lines to the engines worked flawlessly. And here's something really impressive. Despite the intense vibrations during Starship's ascent, it appears that almost no heat shield tiles fell off, a testament to the engineering that went into keeping them in place under extreme conditions. At T plus 105, the vehicle entered max Q. This is when the ship faces maximum aerodynamic pressure, yet it remained stable, cutting through the dense atmosphere like a silver arrow. By T plus 235, the outer ring of engines shut down simultaneously, leaving just the three center engines roaring. This marked Miko, main engine cutoff, a critical moment signaling the start of stage separation. And then the stage separation went off without a hitch. We can see the hot staging ring was jettisoned from the vehicle. This ring, acting as a heat shield, protected the booster from the extreme exhaust gases from the upper stage during the separation. Removing this ring also eliminates 10 tons of dry mass. At this point, the booster had already lost most of its initial mass. Then, it was ready to perform significant velocity adjustments and head back home. After that, we could see the booster descending at speeds exceeding the speed of sound multiple times. As it entered the denser part of the atmosphere, the grid fins began their work, adjusting the booster's flight path. At T plus 630, all 13 center engines in the booster ignited simultaneously. This marked the landing burn phase. And just seven seconds later, Later, the 10 engines in the middle ring shut down, leaving only the three central ones running to decelerate and steer the booster. We could see B-12 hovering for a moment, then it moved in and nestled between the two outstretched arms waiting to catch it and catch. It was one of the smoothest landings I've ever witnessed in any landing so far. It was just so perfect, so graceful and utterly mind-blowing. Can you imagine? Even though the booster was basically an almost empty cylinder with very little fuel left, it still stood 71 meters tall with a 9 meter diameter made of steel. And SpaceX parked this flying massive structure from midair more easily than me parking my car. Shout out to the engine system. Despite the constant on and off cycles throughout the journey, every single engine operated smoothly and flawlessly. A special mention goes to the three central engines. The ability to adjust thrust vectoring and engine gimbling in those final moments was truly outstanding. Not only that, the arms worked in perfect harmony with the rocket as well. Absolute synchronization. Congratulations to SpaceX. Despite some observable issues during the flight, basically SpaceX has achieved every milestone needed in Flight 5. This is truly a significant victory for them, and they've made a global impact with this flight. It's absolutely mind-blowing and astonishing. Throughout the history of aerospace development, no company has ever successfully recovered a booster on the first try. But SpaceX did it. The event was so overwhelming that even those involved couldn't believe their eyes. Gwynne Shotwell, president and chief operating officer of SpaceX, tweeted, I don't know what to say a heartfelt acknowledgement of the extraordinary scale of this achievement. Elon Musk also couldn't contain his excitement. He continuously tweeted on Platform X, exclaiming, Starship rocket booster caught by tower, and big step towards making life multiplanetary was made today. Indeed, with Flight 5, SpaceX has successfully completed the first step into a new era, the journey to conquer deep space. Bill Nelson, NASA Administrator, quickly congratulated SpaceX on X. Congratulations to SpaceX on its successful booster catch and fifth Starship flight test today. This congratulatory message is not just a courteous handshake. It's a testament to the importance of Flight 5's success for NASA's space strategies. Coming up, SpaceX is planning to conduct monthly Starship test flights. If this frequency is realized, it could significantly contribute to certifying the spacecraft for crewed launches in preparation for Artemis III. Additionally, Representative Kevin Kiley, a politician serving in the U.S. House of Representatives, tweeted on X, Congratulations, SpaceX, a catch for the ages. 
Notably, Congress has played a crucial role in facilitating Starship's launch, showcasing the government's strong support for innovation in the space industry. This flight even garnered deep respect from SpaceX's competitors. Dave Limp of Blue Origin, one of SpaceX's primary rivals in the private space race, tweeted, Congrats to the at SpaceX team on the whole mission today. This acknowledgement from a major player in the industry speaks volumes about the significance of this achievement. Indeed, SpaceX has solidified its unmatched position in this field. Do you know what the most powerful and reliable rocket system in operation is right now? They are SpaceX's Falcon Line. Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy have become the backbone of the space industry, boasting unparalleled reusability and reliability. But with this fifth Starship flight, SpaceX has essentially rendered its own sophisticated rocket system obsolete. They set records and then break their own records. Starship doesn't just surpass the Falcon. It outshines every rocket system from any company or government organization around the globe. Just think about it. While Blue Origin hasn't even managed to recover a single booster from its new Glenn rocket using landing legs, SpaceX has done so without any landing gear. They've made landing legs obsolete before anyone else could even grasp the reusability technology that involves them. This is a revolution in rocket design and operation. What's truly astonishing is that we're still in the early days of developing this vehicle. SpaceX has so much more to do with the rocket hardware. There's still room for improvement with engines, heat shields, hot staging rings, and much more. This is just the first version of Starship, and we can expect even more breathtaking flights with Starship versions 2 and 3 in the future. And in future test flights, SpaceX will try to land the upper stage of the vehicle on Mechazilla arms. Wow. Do you remember that mind-blowing sight when Falcon 9 boosters simultaneously return to their landing pads? Absolutely insane, right? Now, imagine that same breathtaking moment, but this time with the Super Heavy booster and Starship at Boca Chica, with not just one, but two launch towers. You land the Super Heavy booster, stack another ship on top, refuel, and in just a few hours, just a matter of hours, the entire system is ready for another flight. This level of turnaround time is unheard of. And guess what? Every other launch company dealing in medium to heavy rockets is trembling with fear. Once this becomes a reality, they'll lose whatever competitive edge they had left. SpaceX will be launching heavier payloads for cheaper and still turning massive profits. Orbital Economy here we come. Well done, SpaceX. To be honest, although this was a resounding success, there were still some minor technical issues observable during this flight on both stages of the Starship. For example, there was burning on the engine skirt of both stages. We also saw a burn-through occurring on one of the Chinese. Elon Musk also shared, some of the outer engine nozzles were slightly deformed due to high temperatures and strong aerodynamic forces. However, this is an easy fix. Additionally, the burning on the upper stage flaps is also a noteworthy point. Yes. Technical things. Do you want me to analyze any specific aspect in more detail? Comment below. All right, that's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more in depth looks at the latest advancements in space technology. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.